Number 1. Tucked away in the lush gardens of Kromlau in Saxony, a perfectly arched bridge draws tourists and professional photographers to the site who marvel at the perfect circle that the reflection of the stone arch creates in the water. The Rakotsberg, also known as the Devil's Bridge, is one of many bridges in Europe carrying the mystifying nickname which is often inspired by mythical tales and sagas. Many of the ancient parabolic bridges were considered a miracle and impossible to build without help from Satan. Take the Diavolsky Most near Ardino, Bulgaria for example. After the powerful Arda River had destroyed several bridges before, locals believed the site to be cursed. The ambitious undertaking to construct a new bridge by a builder was met with skepticism. Legend has it that he made a pact with the devil who offered to share the secret of building a lasting bridge in return for a few favors, including that his image would be eternalized in the final construct. If you visit on a clear day and tilt your head, you supposedly see the devil's face and horns in the reflection. The devil also helped the people in Yuri to build the bridge in the Swiss Schollen and Gorge demanding that he would receive the soul of the first person who crossed the bridge. The locals outsmarted the devil and sent a goat instead. A woman in Kirkby, England, struck a similar deal with the devil after one of her cows had disappeared into the woods on the other side of the river. Again, the devil asked for a soul in return for building a bridge across, but the woman sacrificed her dog rather than herself. In comparison to many of its counterparts, scattered all over Europe, Cromlau's bridge is fairly new. Commissioned in 1860, the brief was very clear, to create a half-circle which on a clear and calm day would be mirrored in the water underneath, and give the illusion of a perfect circle. The thin, gravity-defying arch reaches across the pond, where it meets a cluster of soaring basalt columns on each side. Even though no witchcraft or satanic powers were used during construction, the setting of Cromlau's Devil's Bridge sure catapults you into a fairy tale. Spanning over the tranquil pond and surrounded by blooming azaleas and rhododendrons in the spring, Rakotsberg easily makes the list of Germany's most magical places. Just be aware that taking pictures from afar is allowed but crossing the bridge is not, even if you've seen images of people doing so on Instagram. The delicate arch is feared to crumble, which may be the downside of prioritizing pesticides over purpose. Number 2 even for the most seasoned of explorers, Mount Roraima, a plateaued mountain about 1,300 feet high, located where Brazil, Venezuela, and Guyana converge, might prove to be an experience far beyond the typical. Mount Roraima National Park, also known as Monte Roraima and the floating island of Venezuela, is different than the usual hiking trail, or even the usual mountain. Its remote location, mixed with the mysterious air of untouched territory and indigenous folklore, make it an adventure that promises much more than many who climb it bargain for. Before European conquistadors arrived in South America, indigenous populations revered Mount Roraima as a regional symbol, referring to it as the Axis Mundi, a tree where all the world's fruits and vegetables grow. It was a peaceful and tranquil place, protected by the Macuxi people. However, over time, the arrival of foreigners in search of El Dorado and landscapes steeped with gold meant that the purity of Mount Roraima would not remain intact forever. Later, the arrival of miners marked a change in the environment of Mount Roraima, with alcohol, violence, prostitution, and venereal disease infecting the area. High-pressure water hoses blasted open the land in search of treasure left pools of water, which bred disease. The Macuxi thought they would be able to peacefully coexist and work together with the miners, but this turned out not to be the case. The trend continued into the present day. The Brazilian government sought to build dams, roads, and form a municipal government over the territory, claiming those in the region wanted the same infrastructures as the rest of the country. However, the Macuxi stood their ground against the changes, blocking construction and impeding the development where possible. For the time being, the dam project has been abandoned, with the governor citing the expense to reach the remote location as the primary reason for leaving it behind, not the Macuxi resistance. Mount Roraima has drawn the attention of not only treasure-seeking miners, but also famous authors intrigued by the untouched swaths of lands. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, in his 1912 novel The Lost World, described an ascent of Mount Roraima, with the characters in this story discovering extinct creatures who were still living on the remote plateaus. In the Pikeser film Up, the Paradise Falls are also said to have been based on the dramatic waterfalls found in the area. While they have eroded over time, the Tepuis, or House of the Gods in Piman, seem to have been aptly named, given the intimidating structure that may deter even the most intrepid of climbers. Although the Tepuis have been climbed, only a few have been extensively explored. 
Some posit this isolation and lack of exploration could mean some species believed to be extinct may actually still be alive and well on Mount Rorema. The flora and fauna of Mount Rorema is unique, including pitcher plants, bellflower, and rapadia heather. Long before tourists hiked up Mount Rorema, the ancient Indians living near there viewed it with a special mythical significance. The Piman Indians saw it as an integral part of world history. The great tree that bore all the fruits and crops was felled by one of their ancestors. The tree crashed to the ground, unleashing a terrible flood. According to the myth, Mount Rorema is the remaining trunk left after the flood, and the rivers flowing therein are the territory of those peoples. The Piman also believed anyone who climbed to the top of the Tepuis would not come back alive. To this day, the indigenous people living near Mount Rorema give reverence to this great mountain and its history. The ancient Indians of the area are not the only ones who believe in the power and mystery of Mount Rorema. Beyond the intriguing plant life and legends around Mount Rorema, it is also known for its high frequency of UFO sightings nearby and atop the plateaus. Tourists have reported seeing strange twirling lights hovering above or between Mount Rorema and Kukunim, another nearby Tepi. The Grand Sabana region is indeed a hotspot for UFO sightings, with some mystic tour companies popping up in the area promising to show tourists the paranormal side of Mount Rorema. As curious as it may seem, this isn't entirely out of the ordinary. Ancient sites all over the globe seem to attract UFO sightings, from Chaco Canyon, New Mexico, to ancient Egypt. Most people who dare to scale Mount Roraima report having some kind of strange experience, be it feelings or things they sense, while exploring the area. Number 3 I suppose I shouldn't have taken the parking attendant's advice so literally. You'll know it when you feel it, he had told me, when I asked where I'd find the vortex. I had traveled to Sedona for a weekend to see if I would experience what many visitors come here to find, a static in the air, the vortex. Inside a steep, coral-colored canyon decorated with pine trees, this sleepy Arizona city has long been a quiet refuge for hikers, romantics and soul-searchers. For many, it's a place of mystique and magic. Walking past its earth-toned grocery stores, banks, and restaurants, you'll find that Sedona's tourists and locals go into many of the same places. So much so that residents seem like former tourists themselves. Crystal and incense shops sit prominently between visitor centers with pushy timeshare salesmen. Jeep tours that carry you to majestic points around the city, which is set amid glowing red rocks, bring convenience and modernity to what could otherwise be a still from an old western. And the view is also picturesque from every hotel, bed and breakfast, and residential building. To preserve its beauty, this city of just over 10,000 people has a strict building code and zoning laws. Structures can grow too high and must be colored in hues that complement the natural tones of the red rocks. Even the famed golden arches at McDonald's are turquoise here, to enhance the desert's natural beauty. But many visitors to Sedona come looking for something in addition to this beauty. Native American legend recounts a spot where the Earth's energy is supposedly concentrated and crackling. Where you can experience a range of sensations that encourage self-healing and spiritual awakening. The Vortex The supposed healing power of vortexes gained popularity during the late 20th century. In 1987, some 5,000 believers flocked to Sedona for what became known as the Harmonic Convergence. The event began as an interpretation of the Mayan calendar. Tens of thousands of people around the world gathered around spiritual centers for meditation, to protect the Earth from spinning away into space. While praying for a global awakening, many of those who came to Sedona developed a feeling of deep, astral connection to the red rock formations. Word of Sedona's mysterious vortexes began to spread. There are many trails through the rocks around Sedona that guide you to these coveted locations. On my recent visit, we chose to try the airport Mesa Loop. While more strenuous than some, it's a great hike if you are looking for exercise and a spectacular view of town. Pack light in everything but water, as there is not much shade and some steep drops. As the trail ascends, there are panoramic views of Elephant Rock, Courthouse Butte, Bell Rock and Cathedral Rock, Sedona's most visited landmarks. The trail circles around two sides of the mountain, marked by a difference in both plant life and geological formations. Once you near the end, it becomes hard to believe you are on the same path. Because of the trail's popularity, two parking lots are accessible to visitors. While the one lower down the mountain is closer to the official entrance of the trail, its small size made it too difficult to park in the afternoon. We drove to the very top of the airport mesa 
and took in views of the city before the parking attendant pointed us to a spot past a fence near the road, where we hiked down a mile-long trail that forked at the entrance of the airport Mesa Loop. Every few steps of the roughly 3.3-mile-long trail encourage you to give in to the natural setting. A heightened feeling, tingling fingers and velvet in the air, distracted me from the multiplying hikers and marriage proposals. We walked for hours, and we felt a lot, aches, pain, wonder. And it was only after we completed the loop, and came back to the starting point of the trail, when we discovered the vortex. Standing atop the mini mesa elicited a more intense feeling, than the one I had already felt in town. Red rock vistas transformed to soaring pillars, as if you're inside a gothic cathedral. It's something that the New Age faithful preach about, and even skeptics might buy into. Once you wake up from your trance, you'll notice tourists and locals basking in the same feeling. It's a Sedona moment that can't be replicated. Number 4 Not only is Devil's Pool one of the most beautiful locations in Australia, it's also one of the most mysterious and dangerous spots to visit. Several people, mostly young men who have visited this location, have also lost their lives. From a man simply trying to avoid a gap between rocks, to another who disrespected the location, many people have tragically died while visiting this beautiful place. The area is also said to be haunted, and especially cursed. Legend has it there's a grief-stricken ghost of a young woman still searching for her lover in the water. Many visitors to the location claim that she still haunts the waters, and is the reason so many young men perish there. Non-believers in the paranormal claim that there is a much more natural explanation to the drownings, such as slippery rocks and fast-running water. Whatever your beliefs are, Devil's Pool is one of the most cursed areas on the planet, filled with dark mystery and horrible tragedies. At the foot of three streams running through the Babinda boulders is the yearly named Devil's Pool. It's located 58 kilometers south of Cairns in North Queensland, Australia in a small town named Babinda. The pool is a very popular spot for people hiking and backpacking on their way to Cairns. This natural pool in the Queensland rainforest has claimed at least 17 lives, and is a highly dangerous location for even the best of swimmers. The water runs exceptionally fast, which can lead to people being pinned underneath the water and trapped between logs and rocks. It's also almost impossible to stay afloat, as the water is very highly oxygenated. And if the name Devil's Pool isn't frightening enough, some locals have nicknamed an area in the water the washing machine, because the water goes around and around, just like you guessed it a washing machine. One emergency service member said, it's all bubbles so there is no buoyancy. It's dangerous water. It sucks you under. The town of Babinda is known as one of Australia's wettest towns if not the wettest. In fact, the annual average rainfall there usually exceeds 4,000 millimeters. However, even when the water is low, it can still suck people under and hold them beneath the surface, causing them to drown. The area is undeniably beautiful, and going for a swim is a natural thought for many visitors. But the Devil's Pool is not a place where people should indulge in their urge to enter the water. Since 1959, 17 people have drowned in the pool, and even more have lost their lives there, according to old newspaper articles. In fact, written on a plaque in remembrance of someone who lost his life there is are the words, he came for a visit and stayed forever. While there are many unfortunate victims of the Devil's Pool, let's discuss just a few. A young couple was in the area when a storm hit, and suddenly a flash flood swept them away. While the woman was able to survive, the man wasn't so lucky, and drowned in the water. In 1979, a 24-year-old man named Peter McGann was visiting the location when he slipped and fell as he jumped from one rock to another, trying to avoid the gaps. Experienced divers finally found him almost six weeks later. Other victims who have lost their lives in the water There are tourists from Adelaide in 2004, and a businessman who was visiting the area from Sydney in 2006. The most recent death at the pool happened to a Tasmanian naval seaman in 2008. The 23-year-old man, named James Bennett, along with three of his friends decided to visit Devil's Pool in late November. They had walked past the safety rails, and entered the swirling water also known as the washing machine. Bennett was swimming when he was suddenly pulled backward, almost as if he was pulled by an unseen hand. He attempted to reach for a branch, but it snapped in half, and he began struggling in the water. His head went under, and the only thing his friends could see, were the tips of his fingers trying to reach for help. While his friends attempted to help him, he ended up completely disappearing underwater. His remains were found three days later. 
Needless to say, the divers have an exceptionally difficult job searching for the drowned victims, as they could themselves easily become trapped under the rocks, particularly since the majority of the bodies have been found under rocks and logs. Some bodies have even been found continuing to spin around in the water. These brave divers are attached to the land by ropes when they enter the dangerous waters. 16 of the 17 people who have died there were males. The only female who died at the location drowned in the water farther upstream. Well it's been reported that 17 people have lost their lives at Devil's Pool since 1959, it's believed that many others have also died tragically at that location. Old newspaper articles have been found that suggest as much. According to an old article in the Cairns Post on Saturday, June 10, 1933, a man named T. Winterbottom was swept over the Barren Falls, and his body was missing for almost a week. Here is a report of the search for him, although it is practically a week since the unfortunate man, Mr. T. Winterbottom, was swept over the Barren Falls, and all likely places have been searched, the body has not yet been located. It is problematical, as to where the body can be, as the first pull under the falls proper is of a tremendous depth, and, perhaps the body may be lodged in crevices, or caves which may exist beneath this water. Again, the body may be lodged in one of the crevices under the second pool. The search is being continued, and a further search of the Devil's Pool will be made. Then, on November 18, 1940, another article in the Cairns Post read, the tragic story of the eight-year-old child, John Dominic English who was drowned in the Devil's Pool last Sunday was retold in the police court at Atherton. The legend of the Devil's Pool has been around for many years, long before any of the reported drownings took place. The local Aboriginal people tell a legend about a beautiful Udinji girl named Delana. She married a highly respected elder from her tribe named Warnu. However, not long after they were married, a new tribe moved into the area and Alana quickly fell in love with a man named Daiga. After they began their affair, they fled their tribes and ran away to the valleys, but the elders caught up to them and they were captured. Alana was able to escape her captors and jumped into the waters of the Babinda boulders. After calling for her lover, Daiga jumped into the water, but she lost sight of him. Her sad cries are said to have turned the still water into a rushing flood that made the land shake. Large boulders dispersed around the creek, and Ilana is said to have disappeared amidst them. The Devil's Pool has been named one of Australia's most haunted locations. Many people have heard a woman calling out in the middle of the night. Some visitors have also captured pictures with a face appearing underwater. They believe it's Ilana's ghost. In fact, people claim to still hear Ilana's cries and calls for Daiga, and her ghost still apparently guards the boulders. Others believe that her spirit is what causes so many men to drown in the waters as she lures them to their deaths. In several of the drowning cases, it's said that the victims were pulled and held under the water, as if by another person's hands, when nobody was in fact beneath them. People who disrespect the location are also severely punished. One example is that of a young man who was visiting the pool, when he decided to kick one of the signs. He then slipped, fell into the waters, and drowned. The police took the father of one of the drowning victims to the location of his son's death, and the man took a photo of the spot. He got the photos developed the next day, and, allegedly, in the picture, was the image of his son with a cigarette in his mouth. Since James Bennett's death in 2008, there have been no more reported drownings at Devil's Pool. One reason is because it was declared a no-go zone after the last tragic drowning. In fact, there's a sign in front of Devil's Pool that was put up by authorities at the Cairns Regional Council, giving a very direct warning to visitors. It reads, This creek has claimed many lives. Wet rocks are extremely slippery. Beware of rapidly rising water levels. Do not swim in main creek downstream of this point. This track leads to lookouts only. For your safety keep to walking track provided. Unfortunately, people still put their lives at risk by swimming in the exact same location where so many others before them have met their tragic fates. There's no denying that this location has a very dark history, starting with a tragic legend about two young lovers who lost their lives there. Add to that the high number of people who have tragically drowned there over the years, and it creates an ominous mythos. Are these tragic events caused by the ghost of an inconsolable young woman searching for her lover, or by the natural dangers of the pool? We may never know the answer, but one thing is for sure. Devil's Pool is a highly cursed location, and visitors should tread carefully. Number 5 Stone circles are prehistoric monuments comprising one or more circles of upright or recumbent stones. The circle of stones may be surrounded by earthwork features such as enclosing banks and ditches. 
Single upright stones may be found within the circle or outside it and avenues of stones radiating out from the circle occur at some sites. Burial cairns may also be found close to and on occasion within the circle. Stone circles are found throughout England, although they are concentrated in western areas, with particular clusters in upland areas such as Botman and Dartmoor in the southwest, and the Lake District and the rest of Cumbria in the northwest. This distribution may be more a reflection of present survival, rather than an original pattern. Where excavated they have been found to date from the late Neolithic to the Middle Bronze Age, c. 2400 to 1000 BC. It is clear that they were designed and laid out carefully, frequently exhibiting very regularly spaced stones, the heights of which also appear to have been of some importance. We do not fully understand the uses for which these monuments were originally constructed, but it is clear that they had considerable ritual importance for the societies that used them. In many instances excavation has indicated that they provided a focus for burials and the rituals that accompanied interment of the dead. Some circles appear to have had a calendrical function, helping mark the passage of time and seasons, this being indicated by the careful alignment of stones to mark important solar or lunar events such as sunrise or sunset at midsummer or midwinter. At other sites the spacing of individual circles throughout the landscape has led to a suggestion that each one provided some form of tribal gathering point for a specific social group. Large irregular stone circles comprise a ring of at least 20 stone uprights. The diameters of surviving examples range between 20 and 40 meters, although it is known that larger examples, now destroyed, formerly existed. The stone uprights of this type of circle tend to be more closely spaced than in other types of circle, and the height and positioning of uprights also appears not to have been as important. They are widely distributed throughout England, although in the south they are confined largely to the west. Of the 250 or so stone circles identified in England only 45 examples of large irregular circles are known. As a rare monument type which provides an important insight into prehistoric ritual activity all surviving examples are worthy of preservation. Castlerick stone circle remains unencumbered by modern development and is one of the finest examples of a large irregular stone circle in England. Map extract the site of the monument is shown on the attached map extract. It includes a 10-meter boundary round the archaeological features, considered to be essential for the monument's support and preservation. Number 6 Baffling the most well-traveled of our world, this captivating phenomenon happens in the Indian Ocean, on the tropical island of Mauritius. Visible year-round, it is completely safe to swim in, or even surf on. To ignite your wanderlust, here's how the magic operates on this paradise island. If you've never come across this island before, it's chiefly known for being the home of the now extinct dodo bird. More recently, Mauritius took the world by storm with the discovery of a lost continent beneath it, known as Mauritia. It's now back with, yet another fascinating trait, an underwater waterfall. Just to be clear, it isn't an actual waterfall, but rather an illusion which can only be seen from up top. Located on the southwestern coast of the island, known as Lumorne Peninsula, the phenomenon takes place in the turquoise lagoon. Thanks to the crystal clear water, it possible to see through it, being the key to unraveling the mystery. Misleadingly, it isn't the water which is actually falling into the unknown, but rather the sand and silt sediments which are in perpetual movement. Mauritius, being a relatively young island, happens to sit on an ocean shelf raised above seabed level. Off this particular coast, a gradual slope is noticed, abruptly ending in a 4,000 meter deep abyssal drop. Thanks to this marine topography, various shades of blue are visible due to the movement of sand and silt deposits along these slopes. It is this unique harmony of shades which create the optical illusion which has won so many admirers across the world. To best capture this gift from Mother Nature, there is nothing better than a helicopter ride above the Lamorne Peninsula. Enhanced with the UNESCO World Heritage Peak, the view gets even more breathtaking and begs for unlimited snapshots and footage. The national carrier, Air Mauritius, offers great deals for this memorable flight. Number 7 Skullig Michael, a small, uninhabited, rocky island 8 miles from the small carry fishing town of Port Magee, is getting worldwide attention after featuring in the mega-hit film Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Tourism Ireland has predicted that the inclusion of the island in the film will attract a large number of new visitors to the country. Rising 230 meters above the sea, the mystic island, which holds the ruins of an ancient monastery, was named UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1996. 
Skellig Michael, which is also known as Great Skellig, is the larger of two islands located 7.2 miles west of the Ivor Peninsula in Company. Kerry. The smaller of the two islands, is known as Little Skellig. The name Skellig comes from the word Salic, which means a steep rock. The first known reference to the islands occurs in legend. Skellig Michael is named as the burial place of Ur, son of Milesius, who drowned during the landing of the Milesians. In a text from the 8th or 9th century, Dua, king of West Munster, is said to have fled to Selic after an episode of conflict between the kings of Munster and the kings of Cashel. The first reference to monks on the Skellig dates to the 8th century, when the death of Subni of Selig is recorded, although a monastery may have been founded on the site as early as the 6th century. The island was dedicated to St. Michael the Archangel sometime before 1044, when the death of Ed of Selig Mitchell was recorded. It is likely that the dedication to St. Michael was celebrated in the building of St. Michael's Church in the monastery. Climatic deterioration, resulting in colder weather and increased storms, along with changes in the structure of the Irish Church, led to the end of the Eremitical community on the island by the 13th century. The monks appear to have moved to Bolinskalix on the mainland. Skellig Michael continued as a place of pilgrimage well into the 18th century. The island appears on several Italian and Iberian Portolan charts of the 14th to 16th centuries, and the accounts of the Spanish Armada in 1588 indicate that the Skellig Michael was known to them. Skellig Michiel passed to the Butler family in 1578. In the early 19th century, Skellig Michael was purchased by the predecessors of the Commissioners of Irish Lights, in order to erect two lighthouses. The Office of Public Works took the monastic remains into state guardianship in 1880 and began the repair of collapsed structures. Since then, the OPW has continued to repair and conserve the monastic remains. The Irish government purchased the island from the Commissioners of Irish Lights in 1989, with the exception of the Working Lighthouse and Ancillary Areas. The island is known for its seabird colonies, and, combined, the two Skellig Islands comprise one of the most important seabird sites in Ireland. In 1996, Skellig Michael was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site.